Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to be basically showing you a video of how my open source code works. Currently it's only set to private in GitHub, but it's going to be available in the next two weeks to everybody else that is not in Patreon. For now it's available in Patreon as early access. So if you want to check it out, make sure you check it out in Patreon and I'll give you access to the repo. But after that, it'll be after about 10 days, it'll be available for everyone. So I want to show you a couple of videos before we jump into looking at some of the structure and, and some of the code as well. So this is video one and I'm basically showing you how I can select uh, the line, how I can draw, how I can move the controls. If I move one, it's independent on the other one. So this video just shows you, you know, that you can draw and you can basically walk at the same time or run at the same time. So if I go to video two, we can also select different colors. Let me actually go back here. So these indicators right here that I have in the, so as you can see right here, these ones are indicating that I'm selecting that color. So I, I added that in the UI. It's very basic. I have brush options where I can change the line width. When I'm changing it, it changes the line width on the label. I also have different presets on colors. I wanted to do a color picker, but I ran out of time. So I'm just basically just placing a few colors and then I'm using the RGBA to get the color from the from the actual texture. So I'll show you that in the code. And then this new point, point distance, it basically allows you to determine at what point to, to actually create a new point in the line render. It allows you to, let's say that you wanna draw from here to here. So I could create many points in the way or I can just create one point from here and then another point right here. So that allows me to, to create basically lines that are straight. It doesn't have a, lo a lot of curvature, actually no curvature whatsoever. It's just going to create more of a, of a straight line. So let me just go ahead and keep playing this video. This one is selected different colors, so you can see that I have different colors, just moving my hands around. And honestly, just, just having fun doing that. Let me go ahead and show you the next video, which is video three. This video, I wanted to see if I could draw a cube and, and know that I was sitting down and I was watching my kids when I was doing this. So it's not perfect. I, I probably should should have done it, you know, in a different, may, maybe at night when they fall asleep. But here I'm just drawing a cube and then just looking at going back and then going inside. So the cool thing about this is I can be very precise. I can see where the control is intersecting with the line. You can probably see it if I get right about there, you can see that it's intersecting right about there. So I can put the control right here and I can be very precise on where I'm drawing the line. So I could have, you know, done a, a better job in there. So it's going to play it and then you can see the whole thing. And I'm almost done here with the cube. Just one more line. And that just basically finishes that, that cube. So let me just show you the, the another video lower the volume as well. Here I'm just testing, you know, drawing uh, letters. I'm just saying hello Twitter and just seeing how, I think I think making the line thicker in this case made it too hard to read, but you can change the line the line width as well. So those are some of the videos that I, that I show you so that you know how it works. So if you go into the, so the way that it's set up right now is I have a VR player control. Let me walk you through the whole thing so you guys understand. So I have a VR player controller. I have inside the OVR camera rig, and these are components that are available as part of the Oculus integration. So if you guys haven't watched those videos, make sure that you watch those videos. You can also download the Oculus integration from the asset store. Let me show you that really quick before we jump into looking at the structure. So you can click on search for assets. You can just search for Oculus. And then the first asset, it's going to be the one that I'm using. And the it doesn't have really good reviews, but to be honest, I haven't had any issues with them. So there's just it just depends on, I guess, on the version. But we're using version 1.43, which is the latest version that Oculus has, and that's the one that I just basically updated yesterday when I was working on getting this project in GitHub. So the the thing that I wanted to show you is I have a like I said I will have a VR player controller. Inside I have an OVR camera rig. This is part of the Oculus integration. OVR camera rig here, OVR, OVR manager. I'm using the Quest, so that's why I have the Quest as one of the elements selected. And I also have an OVR headset sim emulator. So this is all default. I didn't change any of that. 
the part that I customized were the left hand anchor. So this is a component that Oculus provides to you, but inside of it, I have a couple of components that are the ones that I have for the experience. So if you want to know how this works, you can go into the VR control options. So the VR control options basically has a canvas. So that's the canvas that you see right here. It's independent. And this one has the world space because I wanted to make sure that I can, you know, I can see it in world space. And each of them have a canvas. So if you're looking for the left hand, which is this one right here, you can see that everything it's it's basically part of that component. Or if you want to look at the right hand anchor, then it's you know it's gonna be it's gonna be this one right here. And if you look at the VR control options, that's going to be the UI that I have right here. I have all the different components in here, the background that you're seeing there, which is black, the header, the line, the actual you know slider label. So this is what displays the value of the slider. Here's the slider, the, the control label. And then I created a custom control that basically allows me to send an event to the to the engine, to the little draw manager that I created, telling the system that, I, that I'm changing the color. So you can see that I have a VR draw color component. It tells me whether it's focused, whether it's selected, whether the control option that I'm selecting is a color or I'm doing the slider. The reason why I did it this way is because you might want to change the slider, you might want to change the color. So this VR draw color works with both. You're going to see that if you go to the line width slider, there's also going to be a VR controller option in there. And this is, this is basically a slider. If I, go to the, if I go to the color, you're going to see that I have, you know, I have a VR control options, which is, which is also what we were looking at. And if I look at these, let's see, VR controller option. And then I think I started working, you know, in a way that I wanted to use it independently and then I ended up creating its own so I might need to go back and then refactor this because the idea was to to use a component that could be reusable but right now I just know that the VR control oh, okay I remember now I remember now so let's go ahead and look at the code and then so this VR controller option if we go into it it's going to be it's very you know it's very minimalistic meaning that this just has its focus is selected and then it selected, it just means that, you know, I have selected a color or I, ha I, I have a color that is focused, whether something that is selected, this just determines, you know, what the controller type is going to be. This is either is a slider or a color. So I was saying that I wanted to make it, you know, so that we could reuse it. Actually, it works that way. The This is a base class, and this is going to work for the slider. And the, the one that I'm using for the color, if you look at the VR draw color, that one is actually inheriting from VR controller option. The the difference between this one and this one is that the VR draw color has a basic, basically an action, and in that action determines you know when something is going to change. So if I select the color, I want to invoke an action, and that's what you're seeing in here. I have a VR color change. If you look at the VR color change, it basically inherits from Unity event, and therefore it's going to be a Unity action that I can bind to a meta. So Hopefully that makes sense. That basically just means that, you know, when it, whenever I'm selecting the color, I'm going to be call, I'm going to be calling the method that it is bound to, and I'm going to be passing in the color. So that's what this work. That's how this works. This is the slider, and then this is the color. This is basically inheriting from the the line with slider. And then other things that I have in here is basically the, and and I know that you guys always mention that I say basically too much, so. Tell me that I'm, I shouldn't be using basically that much, but I can't, I can't, I can't stay away from it. But anyway, so the minimum distance slider, this is what determines at what point we're going to be creating a new point. So I'll show you that in the code as well. So those are some of the VR options. Like I said, I have it on the, on the right controller and also on the left controller. So they're just basically clones. And just know that you could do prefabs with this. When I did it, I didn't do prefabs. So we could, you know, if you're going to be using this, make prefabs, I think it's easier to work with those, especially if you if you have to make a change on one and then you want that to reflect the change on the other one. And then just know that right now, these are some of the components that this has. It has the VR controller options. This is binding all the different UI options to basically to the controller. And then also a few properties in here, you know, when, some, when somebody changes the line width, it's going to be calling this method. When somebody changes the distance, is going to be calling this method. So these are two Unity events that I'm using. And then I also have a canvas group so that I can basically hide it and show it because I wanted to animate it instead of just hide it. 
So I'm using the canvas group to basically fade it out and then fade back in. So now let's go into the left controller anchor and look at what it has. So this one just works specifically for the Oculus Touch Quest controller. I, I wanted to make it work with, you know, with the Oculus Rift, but I ended up just making it work with Oculus. So that's why this prefab is here. And then also the one on the right controller anchor. So the other pieces that are really important in here is this component called VR Draw Left and then the VR Draw Right. So this is basically what's doing most of the work is doing the drawing on the left controller. And then this one is doing the drawing on the right controller. So if you look at some of the options, I have whether this is going to be for the for that right hand or it's going to be for the left hand and also what the object that we're going to be tracking movement for it's going to be so in this case i'm tracking the movement on the right hand anchor and that is important because when i'm moving the control i want to know the position of that and the rotation so that i know how to draw the lines so that's what those are this one and then this one and then i have a few options in here the minimum distance the minimum drawing pressure the line width and some of these ones you don't have to change in here you can set defaults if you like but those are basically set through the through the ui the other things that i have in here that i need to remove now that i'm looking at is i was using a spline and i'm not using those anymore so i'm just going to go ahead and delete it and i'll check it in as soon as i'm done so you guys can see that so the the other piece that i that i need to remember how to do because i haven't looked at this code is how we run this on the actual you know on the actual editor and if I remember correctly, I have a few components in here that I added when I was working on this. I have a left key and a right key. And if I go into, so what this is basically meaning is I'm going to be pressing the left key so that I can draw. So I'm just going to go ahead and let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. And then see if this is going to work out of the bat. And let me make sure that I remember how this part works and okay yeah so i think i think what i need to do there's other options in here that i also added when i was working on it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and look at the code and then see what i'm using the left key and the right key for and there's zero references on the left key there we go and let me just okay there we go it's on the vr draw actually okay there we go that's what i that's where I implemented it. So if we look at the VR draw, uh, not the actual options, but the VR draw component, this one is just saying it's basically mimicking that I'm holding the, and you can see that I have an editor flag in here. I'm saying, okay, if it's the left controller and the left key is set to true, I'm going to basically mimic that I'm that I'm holding up the key, the, the actual trigger on the controller. So I have this area here that basically allows you to run this experience in the editor. And then if you're not in the editor, I'm, I'm capturing the input from the actual trigger, the index trigger on the controller. And I'm also using the secondary trigger depending on, on the, you know, on the actual controller. So for the primary left controller, I'm getting the axis 1D primary index trigger. And then for the secondary right controller, I'm using the secondary index trigger to do that. So that's how I'm, I'm basically initiating the drawing. And if we look at, so let go, let's go ahead and test this just to make sure. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into my, let's see, let's go back into the VR left. And then I'm going to go ahead and hold that, make sure that that's, actually select that, make sure that that's selected. And then we can go ahead and hit play and then play it again. And then make sure that this is going to, so you can see that I'm drawing, there's a, there's a big line right there. And, and I think something changed on the SDK because this was working on the editor before. But but if you notice, I, I set the left key to true. So if we go here and I start moving the anchor, it looks like this anchor right here. And for some reason, it's not letting me move it. And I wonder if that's because of the new, the new version that I have. All right, guys, so I think I'm going to have to look and see what oculus change because i can't really get it to work on the editor i can get it to work on the device but on the editor i think something it's preventing me from moving the control so i'm going to show you that on the on the next video so what i want to look at today is also look at the actual drawing component and then we can co review and see how that part works so this is mostly the one that is going to do most of the work so it has a serializable field which is the control hand this is just an enum 
that determines, you know, if it's the left hand and the right hand. And the reason why I did that is because I need to determine, you know, what controller this is, because this is going to be used for either the left control or the right control. Then the other thing that I needed to do is I needed to control and, and actually keep, keep track of the object that was going to be doing the movement. So in our case, it's the controller anchor. And that's the anchor that is going to be sending us the movements, and then we're going to be converting those movements so that we can actually draw the line. I also needed to keep track of the previous point distance. The reason why I do this is because I need to calculate the minimum value. So if the previous and the current point are within my minimum distance, then I create a new point. That's what this is for. And then I also have a minimum drawing pressure. I don't really think I use this anymore. I was going to use it, but I don't think it's it's getting used to be honest. So I'm actually gonna get rid of, let's actually get rid of this line. So the next thing that I have is a line default width. So this is what controls the width of the line. I also keep track of the position count. So this is so that I know how many points I am incrementing for the line render. I also keep track of all the lines that I'm that I'm creating. The reason for that is because I want to make sure that I clean up everything when I'm done. I also have a reference to the line render, the current line render that I'm creating, the default color of the line render. This is for debugging and we know that doesn't work, so I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to go back and then, and then fix that. And then I also have a reference to the control options so that we know what the, you know, if the line width change or the color change, so I have a reference back to that. And then on the awake method, I just call the at new line render. I initialize the position count. I create a new game object with the, you know, with the number of lines that we have. In this case, it's gonna be zero. Then I parent the this game object to the basically to the object to track movement, which is going to be the anchor. So this game object is gonna live as a child of the object to track movement object. I also change the position to be the position of that object. I create a new line render. I set the defaults start with and width, which is gonna be the width of the line. Also, whether I use world space or not, which we're using. And also I create a material by using this utility that I created that creates materials dynamically. The reason I do this is because if you change the color, I need to create a new material with that color. I also increment the position count to, to one on this actual line render. I tell it how many cap vertices. I don't think, I think this is too high. This could actually just be four or six. And I think I did 90 because I didn't really know how it worked. But this is how many how many vertices are in the cap so that it looks more round. And then I set the initial position to of the first point which is at index zero to be the position of the object at the beginning. So anytime we add a new line render, that I go through this, basically through that process. This right here is for the TCP server. I'm not gonna go through that right now. I will probably go, go through that in the next video, in another video, probably not the next one, but the next one after that, where we're sending the information to the server and then I'll show you how to start the server so that you know how that information is set, sends back and forth. I also set the current line render to be, you know, the line render that we that we just created, and then I add a new line. So every time we call this, we're gonna be just creating multiple lines. And and the reason I do that is because anytime you're so if you're holding the primary index trigger on the controller, that the first time around it's going to, you know, it's going to start creating a new line. But after that, I just want to update the line, meaning that I'm just gonna be adding points to the line. But then the first time it's just gonna create a new line. So on the update method, this is what I do. If the VR controller options is hidden, this means that the little menu that I have right here, it's not showing because I don't want to draw when that is showing. It just makes the experience really bad. So if that is hidden, I'm going to allow you to draw. Otherwise, it's not going to allow you to draw. And that's what I created this property for on the VR controller options. So this area right here is for the controller to determine if it's the left controller or the right controller, and also for capturing the input. I'm just saying, okay, if, if the index trigger is greater than the minimum drawing pressure, then at that point, I know that I'm updating the line. Otherwise, I'm just saying, okay, I'm going to start drawing because this action get executed. And I do the same thing with the other controller. It just basically checks for the threshold. If we're within the threshold, that means we're updating, updating the line. Otherwise, we're creating a new line. I just noticed that the minimum drawing pressure that I had right above it, we are using it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go back and put it in because that's actually getting used. So I didn't think it was because this is this says zero references. So 
make sure that you don't rely on that. Make sure that you're looking, you're searching for code because maybe that's zero references from code from outside calling into it. So that's kind of misleading in there, but I am using it to determine the, the drawing pressure when this basically gets executed. So, so that's what, how it works on the device. And then on the Unity editor, all I'm saying if it's, you know, if it's the left hand or the right hand, and this key is, is hold down, is this property set to true, then I'm gonna do that. I'm also capturing the input. So if you want to draw with the left arrow, you can do that. And then I'm also doing that with the right arrow. There's an issue with this. I need to get it working that I need to look back. So I'll probably do a, a fix for that and I'll, I'll give you a new, an overview of why that is not working. So on the update line, on, all I'm saying is if the previous point distance is equal to null, then what I do is I set the previous point distance to the current transform position. Otherwise I say, okay, if it's not null and the distance between the previous point and the position of the object to track movement is greater than or equal to the minimum distance, then I know that I need to draw a new point. So I calculate the direction and then I also say the previous point distance and then I, I basically create a new point. And to create a new point, all I do is I just grab the current line render, I set the position, I grab the, per, the, the current position count, I pass in the new position that I'm creating, increment the count, increment the position count so that we can get a new point, and then basically set the position for the new point. And then I send the new position to the TCP client. Don't worry about this because I'm gonna be covering that later. And then that's basically how the drawing works. The update line width, I show you the other methods calling to this. All I'm saying here is the current line render start width, and then I'm basically just passing in the value so that we can change the, the actual width of the line render. The same thing with the update line, the update line color. I have a property that takes in a color, and I'm just saying, okay, as long as we have more than one position count, I'm going to be changing the color of the material that is associated with the current line render. And then I also change the default color so that any new lines get that new color. And then also if I want to update the line minimum distance, which is updated by using the slider that you see right here. If you change that, that's basically gonna be changing the minimum distance to new point, which is then going to be used to determine at what point to draw a new point. So that's basically how, how that works. And then the VR, VR controller options just has basically you know, properties that control when to send the information to the VR draw so the VR draw can get the updated information. So I'm not gonna cover these right now because I have a really bad cough and I promise that I'm gonna give you a better video the next time. So if you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, just let me know. I'm going to be making the code available to everyone, like I said, in the next 10 days to two weeks. And then it's currently available right now in GitHub and through Patreon if you want to get access to that. Thank you guys.